Unfortunately, the Almanac from Back to the Future up on the bookshelf does not have information on this year's NCAA tournament, but we're still going to break down the futures market. Let's look at what we have. We're inside of three weeks, barely, from Selection Sunday. No surprise, UConn is your betting favorite right now to win it all. We haven't had a repeat champion since the early 2000s with Florida, or mid-2000s, I should say, those Billy Donovan Gators. So UConn, your overall betting favorite. And then right there in that sort of second tier, but really the same tier, is Houston and Purdue. Both have looked formidable. I don't believe in the Boilermakers, but I certainly understand why they're so high. And then another tier of teams that all could make a run for sure. I mean, Tennessee, Arizona, North Carolina, all in that sort of mix. And then the next tier is what really interests me. There's some prices that catch my eye. I mean, Duke 22 to 1. Who would have thought that a blue blood like the Blue Devils could be flying below the radar? But they kind of are. 22 to 1 at Vandal, 28 to 1 at DraftKings. I don't think they have the horses to go win it all, but I wouldn't be shocked if they got to the Final Four and then anything can happen once you get to the Final Four. That's really what you're looking for. Remember, last year we had very surprised teams in the Final Four. We've had Miami, San Diego State, FAU get there. I mean, even going back to Loyola, Chicago, and Sister G. So just getting to the Final Four, matchups may even favor these teams that kind of get there as a four or five seed, and all of a sudden they're favored in the Final Four game, the National Semifinal. Kentucky is a team I've mentioned and posted to our website, onlyplayers.com. 30 to 1 at FanDuel is pretty attractive. I've made that wager. I think it's hard to not be enticed and intrigued by what Calipari is doing with this turnaround with the defense. And then the offense was explosive, obviously, at Rupp against Alabama over the weekend. But what that defense did to Auburn at the jungle and even to LSU midweek, I've been impressed with the Cats. And they have seven probably guys who are going to get drafted or play in the NBA now. Some aren't quite there yet, they're young, but. There's a lot of talent, and for UK to be 30-1, to 1, I think that's a buy in this March Madness format, which anything can happen. Illinois is another team, 35-1. to 1. Um, I-, I love Brad Underwood. I love what they're doing, and that's a team that's caught my eye. It's just tough. You just don't know the bracket, and so the last thing you want is like Illinois to be a high seed in UConn bracket or things like that, but it- it's going to be tough to beat the Huskies, but they don't always play their best. We know that, so something to keep in mind. And then some long shot. Like St. Mary's isn't terrible at 70 to 1 at DraftKings. That's 55 to 1 at FanDuel, but 70 to 1, they can shoot the heck out of the ball. I don't think they have enough interior play to go up against some of these big teams, but stranger things have happened for sure. That's probably not a trigger I'd pull just yet. I think I need to see the bracket. I don't think that um that those numbers are going to change drastically between now and when the bracket is unveiled. That's the other you have to look at this all the time. In any futures market or anything, is this the best number I can get? Is it going to change moving forward? Do I have to get involved now? Now, it could go either way. It could be better or worse. But these are things I think about. Baylor at 45 to 1. Part, I mean, what they did with Houston, coming all the way back, forcing overtime, doing all that was very impressive. I was impressed with the Bears. And 45 to 1 is something that's going to probably interest me and, and I'm going to get involved with. Scott Drew has won a title. We know that. Um, he's an excellent coach. So, these are things I'm thinking about when I look at a lot of these futures. I don't think the Washington States of the world, Clemson, BYU at the 75 to 1 range. I don't think Wisconsin, Michigan State, San Diego State, or Florida at 55 to 1. Maybe the Gators a little bit. They've been impressive at all for sure. But I, I, those teams don't resonate. But again, if the bracket breaks a certain way, I mean, Gonzaga's 85 to 1. They went into Rupp and beat Kentucky, who I was just touting 30 to 1. Now, I think that was the best they've played all season, but maybe the Zags can put it together. I don't see it, but still 85-1 to 1 at FanDuel. So that's where I am. I don't think – I think we can cut it off at Wake Forest, South Carolina, and Texas at the 100-1, to 1, but it wouldn't be sh- I wouldn't be shocked if any of those three teams made it to the Final Four. I mean, after all, South Carolina beat Tennessee as a 14-point dog. There's a lot to like with that Gamecocks team. I think their coach is going to be SEC Coach of the Year, maybe National Coach of the Year. So things are going well. Uh, with some of these teams, and there's some attractive prices out there, and we're going to talk a lot more about it between now and when the tournament gets going in a little less than a month.